Wow, that was the whole story. Sorry. Let me try that again. Just making fun of my slaves. All right, let's start. <laughs> that was horrible. Hold on. That was a horrible that was the Saddest little. Yeah. Madeline Berkey, 2010. She, her, Denver, Colorado. So I've always loved to bake. It's one of my favorite things in the world. Um, but I was really intimidated by bread. And so, wow, gosh, now it's like about a year ago, I started sourdough, mostly because I was trying to um, seduce my now boyfriend. And I was just bringing him treats all the time at the coffee shop that we both rode out of. And I had like men he'd mentioned that he like might enjoy bread at some point in his life. And I was like, oh yeah, like totally, yeah, like ditto. I totally know how to make that. And then I immediately texted my friends who had a sourdough starter and I was like, I need to learn how to make sourdough. Uh, and so I had like a two week timeline where I learned how to make sourdough. And then he got back from tour and I was like, oh, like, here, I actually, you know, I just like happened to make this. And then I, I love making sourdough. So now it's like a thing that I make, but it was definitely to seduce a human. Are there any other baking projects or like favorite dishes you've made? Oh, this has been like the year of making things since like going out was not really an option. Um, we've made a lot of cookies, like cookies are one of my most favorite things. Um, and I think, yeah, like in the pie chart of like emotional needs this year, like cookie has been really, really sizable. So we like have definitely gotten to like the varsity move of like the pre-scoop and the fridge. Like it doesn't even like make it to the freezer. So they're just like ready to go. Um, those are like cookies and sourdough. But I've also like gotten less intimidated by like Neat, like roasting chickens and like some of the, I feel like I've, I've been a single human for a really long time. So I've mostly always loved to cook, but I mostly eat like sausage and kale, which is great. But it's been very fun having, living with a human who also likes food. Cause then I'm just like, my like love language is cookies and food. So I'm like, let me just make things for you. Um, oh, I started making yogurt, which like, it's not necessarily a new crazy thing, but it's something I didn't realize one could make. And it's been like such a wonderful thing to have in like the weekly process of making stuff. We tried to make kombucha and that was not a success. That was aggressively mediocre on our part. When I graduated Williams, I was like, I am going to like, go back and get my psychology degree. And I'm in a, um, I was on the crew team and like that crew at that point, rowing was like my main physical thing, but was like a huge piece of who I was. And especially I, I started rowing in high school and um, really struggled with an eating disorder and depression. And rowing was like one of the first things that allowed me to really like inhabit my body in a different way and really like acknowledge it its ability to take up space. Um, and that relationship with movement has continued throughout my life. But as, when I graduated, I was like, oh, like I'm gonna have a, like, a psychology practice that combines like movement and psychology, and it's gonna be great. Um, and what happened is I did like, the, the path of least resistance was to start with movement. So I started teaching spin, and then realized that a lot of the questions I wanted to ask um, by going back to school, like I was already asking in the context of um, a class. And then anything that I couldn't, because I was like literally out of breath, I, that's when I started writing. So I started blogging. And so now my life is like still kind of a combination of all of those things where I'm, I'm writing. I just like just finished the very, very first draft of um, like an autobiographical romance novel of my partner and I getting together, which has been like really fun. I had my previous project was um, like a nonfiction essay collection, very much about like looking at like how relationship shapes us and especially like, essentially like, what did it look like to have sex with people in your twenties? And I started and I was like, it was great. And then I actually wrote it and I was like, it was aggressively traumatic. Um, and I was right about 
right as the pandemic started, I was in this period of like, oh, I needed to really dig down and and make that final draft of that project. And in that moment of time in the world, it just was like, whew, like what I do not have energy to do necessarily is to like dig through my own personal trauma. Um, and so I started reading a lot of romance novels uh, and just got really curious about what the container of the romance novel allows you to do. Like there's something in that moment in time that was really wonderful to open a book and be like, I know how this is gonna end. Like I know this is gonna end well and that is like emotionally all I can handle right now. Like I need to know this is gonna end well because everything else in the world right now is a lot. Um, and so this book has been a way to very much kind of like look at the question of what does it look like to love when you've lived long enough to be wounded and to really start to engage with those wounds. Like, how do we manage that? Um, and to look in that, look at that in the container of this is gonna end well and sort of like some of the playfulness you get in that context. And, um, so that's been really interesting. And then I've also kind of on the side, I'm sort of in between with movement. I just, um, like as of tomorrow, so very soon I'm getting, it's, it's official. Um, I'm gonna be a master instructor with a movement program called Animal Flow, which is this like really fun, really wonderful ground-based movement practice. It's sort of like, if you were to see it in the wild, looks like yoga meets like parkour meets like modern dance. Um, and it's just, I fell in love with it because I was super depressed. And at that point I was also doing CrossFit and it just was like, oh, like weights falling on my body or like, it's like way too much right now. And I'm like pretty much trying not to cry in public. Um, and animal flow can be really intense and really fast, but it can also be like really soft and really gentle and really fluid. And so it was this really wonderful, just way to come back to my body. And so that has been like another movement practice that I've really started to explore. Um, especially in this time when going to the gym was like no longer a thing. And so, yeah, it's been really wonderful to kind of play in all of these elements of like, what does, what does movement look like? Um, how can it be like so much more generous and so much kinder and so much more open and then also looking at writing and being like, how can I, I've never written fiction before. So I kind of like am like fiction adjacent right now since it's like autobiographical, but just playing with like, what are other ways to look at movement or to look at trauma or to look at, yeah, how do we bring all that together? So right now I'm sort of in the in-between place, but trying in like good days, trying to like really be excited about the potential of in between. And on like more stressed out days, it's like, oh geez, I am in between. You know, it's been wonky this year for sure. Um, just cause it's like, what does that look like to some degree? I mean, I think a big thing has been actually baking. Like whenever I make whenever we make bread, we try and make two loaves. And it's been really fun to just like cut them in half and be like, who are we feeding? Um, so like my partner, Dan's parents live in the t in town. So we would like bring them half a loaf of bread and like my parent, my dad and stepmom are in town and then just like we bring them bread and like our neighbor's bread. And, and that's been a really wonderful way to just be like, okay, like how can we like, how can we feed people? Um, but yes, also, getting to know the animal flow community in this area has been really wonderful. That was kind of pre-pandemic was like, oh my gosh, any meeting, any flow I could go to, I would just go. And it was so fun because it's like, one of the cool things about animal flow is because it kind of can fit in, in a lot of different movement practices, a ton of different humans um, are there. So like dancers and personal trainers and, um, body workers. And so it's been really wonderful to just have all of these different humans who are excited about movement and body in all of these different ways. Um, like a friend of mine is a dancer and, um, and I actually don't know now if she would necessarily identify as a dancer because um, she's really curious about sort of like, how do we get, she's like 
has this like, she's just so flowy and free. It's like watching her move and exist in the world is like one of the coolest things. And so like we get together now that we can and like flow and do coffee. So usually by way of movement or baking people things, I try and hang out with humans in this community. It's pretty much how I tend to go. Or like if Huckleberry can like, Huckleberry is also a great connector because he just, He's like the kid at the party who like just hangs out with dogs, except he just hangs out with people. Like he's like as a little nervous around dogs, but like really deeply loves human beings. And so, yeah, he also, he does good work. Having been greeted by Huckleberry, it's a wonderful, like, nice little touch point. <laughs> so definitely appreciate that. Um, but also all the really cool work you're doing locally. I mean, again, the intersection of food and people um, and, and your movement practice, both really great ways to engage, you know, in, in terms of meeting new people, but also like supporting local folks. So that's really cool work. Thank you for sharing that. Well, I think one thing that yeah, I feel really grateful to Williamsport is that, or one of the reasons why I was so excited about going to Williams is it felt like you didn't have to be one thing. Like you got to be an athlete and you got to be a student and you didn't necessarily like have to choose between those two things. And I think, um, I mean, on the one hand, I loved school because it felt like, like hopefully this is antithetical to that. Like it was so straightforward. Like I was like, I know, like just study a lot. And then on the rowing side, it was like, try to get to nationals, like try to make NCAAs. And I remember then graduating and being like, oh no, like what do I do? Like all of my goals are now so amorphous and varied. And I like so many moments in my life, I've been like, I just wish I were one thing. Like I just wish I knew what I was passionate about or what specific thing I could go towards. Um, and like, now that I think about it, Williams, kudos, like is a very wonderful foundation of being like, you get like you get to be a, a lot of things and you get to have a lot of interests and all of those things. I mean, all of those disparate parts of oneself like inevitably talk to each other, right? Like it all sort of makes sense. Um, and it's one of the things that I really love about myself and really struggle with my, that like, I sometimes I feel unfocused, but when I'm like not super stressed out about it, it's really wonderful to be like, oh, like of course, like food and nutrition speak to movement, speak to self-worth, speak to sexuality, speak to like how I express myself via writing. Like all of those things make sense. Um, and I think that can be a really, yeah, like it can be a challenging thing about a liberal arts education because you're like, well, it would be really nice if I uh, wasn't just like educated. But then you're like, oh, but th there's so many things that I get to be excited about. And yeah. Oh, like, so can I like do like, like lists? No, I mean, li actually, lists might bring me joy sometimes. I literally just wrote one. Um, Huckleberry, like dog Huckleberry, especially like Huckleberry has been like my butt. Like I got him when I was like, I remember like talking to my therapist and being like, I don't want to put too much pressure on this creature, but like, I would like him to fix everything. Um, and then I got Huckleberry and I was like, oh, I like, most things. Um, so he's been, he's been my butt. Um, but yeah, it's like, I think especially in this moment, this, this year, this like stretch of time, like, it's been really wonderful to have this like list of things that are maybe like are not, oh no, bread. It's like, um, this list of things that maybe are not like huge, but are so wonderful and so dotted through my day. So like Huckleberry and like partner and like, my yogurt and granola breakfast brings me so much joy every day. Like, so much joy. Uh, and like, morning chai. Like, we make chai every morning. And like, going on a walk with my partner and my dog. And like, managing to sit down and write. And, which doesn't happen every day. Um, and cookies 
definitely cookies. And yeah, and just like exploring food in a different way this year has brought me a lot of joy. Like just giving myself permission. I think, especially with like an eating disorder background, I've always been a human that has baked for other people, but not necessarily like, hi buddy. Um, always consumed those things myself. And it was a really wonderful healing thing to live with a partner and like get to witness how he consumes food too and be like, oh, okay, like everything's gonna be okay. Um, and so really softening that relationship in a whole different way has been really wonderful and brings me a lot of joy, uh, which is not to say it is always like an easy food relationship. Um, yeah, and oh, one more thing is, uh, I used to read a ton as a kid, and it was like an interesting thing as an adult to be like, did I really, like, did I just make that part up about myself? And one of the wonderful things in this moment has been to have just more time. And so I have read so much more, and it has been wonderful. Like, like a good fantasy series brings me so much joy. Uh, and most recently, in case anyone has not seen it, Ted Lasso also, like I think one of the most perfect shows of all time uh, brings me, we like just rewatched it and like I can still feel the like, the joy in my, in my body. Season two of oh, <gasps> Judge My Third, yeah. yeah. I have not actually seen oh it, God, unfortunately. I'm so excited for you. Um, I, I've heard so many wonderful things from literally all of my friends in Williamstown, so I'm looking forward to actually it's, watching I'm it. I'm so excited for you. <laughs> Um, but thank you. That, I think one of the really nice parts about um, what you just shared is that it's a very long list that shows a lot of appreciation, um, which is, I, I think, you know, people don't tend to take stock of enough what brings them joy. And I think that's an, that's an important like lesson because, you know, some days are really rough, but, you know, finding that like that cup of chai in the morning and that making something as like part of your day really can just elevate that experience and you know just acknowledging things that bring you joy is so important and so i'm really glad that you have a long extensive list of that well i think as like a chronic depressive like that has been a really important development in my life it's just like having not necessarily huge things but like but trying to build up enough things in my day that just like feel good like that aren't hard or complicated like i can like make no most days if i'm having a really hard day like i can make chai and i can like eat granola and i can like snug huckleberry and i can like get a squeeze from my partner and so that has been a really important thing over the course of like i've, I've had depression most of my life but starting to understand like what that thing is for the last like 10, you know, five, maybe 10 years of being like, oh, like, how do I build up enough of a foundation of, of things that I know bring me joy so that like, yeah, so like when things get really hard, there are still things I can, I can grab onto that will not fix or make everything better, but are like there, that are solid. It did not make to look so pained when you asked that question. Gosh, I was like, go, oh, because I'm like, who? It's such a big question. Because it's like, oh my gosh, I feel like, A, I'm really bad at writing thank you notes. So maybe that's like this like deep-seated guilt that I'm like, oh God, all these humans I should write a thank you note towards or for to Williams. I'm so sorry. I literally don't know the answer to that and I'm flustered, so. Um, I mean, I think, I think there's so many people, I think this is like, are like, oh God. But a human I feel so grateful for is my, like, is my partner right now, um, who, yeah, is just lovely. Um, yeah, I think it's been a really wonderful thing to date in your, like, to be with a human in your, 30s when you like come and you're like oh hi here's like my history and here's your history and that's like this room got very crowded very fast um yeah and it's just wonderful to be with a human that i feel really seen by and like yeah i mean i think 
apparently I'm just gonna cry at this whole answer. Um, yeah, it's unlike anything I've experienced, which is really lovely. And I think as a, like, as a depressive and as like a very feeling human, it's been really lovely to feel like, have some of those like, as a depressive, one of the things that's really I struggle with is loneliness. And I think I have this like, okay, I have this like well of loneliness that is just like, what do I do with it? Um, yeah, and to like not put all of that on one human because I think that is a lot. And that's been, a, I think a tricky thing about pandemic time, right? Is you're like, ooh, hi universe. Like you are my universe. Um, so I think I would say thanks to my partner because he's super neat. Um, yeah, and just, it's really wonderful to inhabit a life with that human. Um, and just, and like, and all of the pieces of that life, right? Like I think it's, co it's complicated and beautiful and easy and tricky and, um, and the more that I, like it's been really wonderful to watch myself get a little bit more comfortable, like not always be so freaked out that like it's all gonna go wrong, you know, that like, ugh. but to really get to settle in and to, um, yeah, like feel really safe with a human. So thanks, Dan. Um, and so that brings us to the end of this Eve's on the Move interview. Are there any other thoughts you'd like to share with anyone who comes across this? Oh, geez. I don't know. Um, doing great. Uh, no, I mean, I think, yeah, I think Williams is a wonderful place and it's like filled with like fiercely intelligent humans. Um, and like we were talking pre-interview about like my own disclaimer for this was like, ah, uh, I don't know. Um, and I like, it's been really wonderful in the course of like engaging with you guys during this project to be like, oh, like it gets to look like a lot of different things you know and like I put so much pressure on myself about that and definitely have felt so much shame about like not having everything figured out you know and like I do not have everything figured out um and so yeah I'm just like I'm really curious to see over the course of this project to like the other voices that come up and just yeah like letting what it all looks like look different and be really like have the you know the post-college adult experience be really generous and really nourishing and really open and like it gets to look like a lot of different things so i'm really i'm like thank you i should write you like let's add the thank you note on to you guys for being like okay like a little bit of permission of like it's gonna be okay um and it's okay that it looks different um so thanks Thanks for the permission, team. It's so funny in those kind of questions because you're like, I have a million people I should say thank you to. And then someone's like, what's your favorite movie of all time? You're like, I've never seen it.